time is it? Y'all know what time it is. It's time to hit that subscribe button. You know just where it's at. Right down there. Right down there. And it's time to follow my Instagram. That's Geekly Amanda. G E E K L Y Amanda. It's the same on Twitter. Make sure to follow me there too. And so I'm get this reaction video started. y'all someone you know this video all right one more time one more time all right y'all well this video was not a request but in one of the comments i was reading about someone commenting about one of krishna's great devotees mirabai mirabai devotee of krishna and this is her story so i was like y'all know i always want to learn more i always want to learn more of the history and and things surrounding especially my my krishna so I was like, let's check this out together. The story of Miraba. Yes, say her name wrong. We'll find out. Y'all ready? Let's go. Born in the early 15th century, Mirabai was a Krishna Mirabai. devotee of the highest That's order. Right. She was born a princess, but oh, gave up the pleasures of palace for begging on the streets of Vrindavan. Mirabai was a Rajput princess and the only child of Ratan Singh, who was the younger brother to the ruler of Mirta one of the prosperous kingdoms of Rajasthan. Meera was only three years old when a wandering saint came to her house. As per the Hindu tradition, the saint was welcomed and treated with a lot of respect by the royals. On his arrival, he placed his statue of Lord Krishna in the room that was given to him by his guru. Oh, when Meera statue. arrived into the room with her grandmother, the first thing that caught her attention was the statue of Lord Krishna. Nobody noticed when she walked past her grandmother and sat in front of the statue of Krishna, seemingly attracted to Krishna. The saint was impressed by the welcome and the treatment he had received and asked Meera's grandmother what would she like in return. While his intention was to give her the blessing she wanted, Meera jumped into the conversation and said oh, that she like wanted the statue. the statue of Krishna. <laughs> In a matter of minutes, when Meera realized that the saint was not in favor of giving her the statue, yeah. she broke down to tears. Oh. No amount of tantrums or tears could convince the sage to give away the statue of his god, gifted to him oh, by his I guru. Understand that. I understand. He blessed the family, picked up the statue and began to walk away. S suddenly, the sage had a change of heart, as if he was told by Krishna himself oh. that this is where the statue belonged, to Meera. He turned and gave the statue to Little Meera and left the palace. From that day, everything in Little Meera's life revolved around her Krishna. She would speak with the statue for hours, wouldn't eat until she fed her Krishna and dressed her idol all day long. On one occasion, when Meera was still young, she saw a wedding procession going down the street. Turning to her mother, she asked in innocence, Who will be my husband? Her mother replied casually, with lack of any seriousness, You already uh. have a husband, Krishna. Meera's mother was supportive of her daughter's blossoming oh, love for Krishna, she but she passed was... away when Meera was 10 years of she age. Gave all her heart to Krishna. At an early age, Meera's father arranged for her to be married oh. to Prince Poj Raj, who was the eldest son of Rana Sangha of Chittor. She like, I already have a husband. They were an influential Rajput family and the marriage significantly elevated Meera's social Another position. However, Meera was unwilling to get married as she had already found her husband in Krishna. But she knew the world would never understand her emotions and under the pressure of her family's reputation, she agreed to marry. She served her husband Bojraj dutifully, but in the evening, she would spend her time in devotion and singing to her beloved Krishna while singing devotional bhajans, she would frequently lose awareness of the world, entering states of ecstasy and trance. Her new family did not approve of her love and devotion to Krishna. To Jealous. make things worse, Jealous. Meera refused to worship their family deity, also known as Ishtadevi, Durga. She said that she had already committed herself to Sri Krishna. You can't her do family all became of increasingly disapproving of her actions, she gave but the all fame and saintly reputation of Mirabai spread throughout the region. 
often she would spend her time discussing spiritual issues with sadhus and people would join in the singing of her bhajans however this just made her family even more embarrassed of her actions meera's sister in law udabai began spreading false gossip to defame meera girls she are we going to was entertaining men in her room like in the name of worshiping krishna her husband what? believing these stories to be true he believed it? stormed into her room with a sword in hand <gasps> however he only saw meera singing to the statue of krishna no oh, man was there luck. at all throughout these private and public insults meera bai remained unmoved by both the criticism and the praise of yes, the world cuz she had the yeah, meera fame spread herself. far and wide and her devotional bhajans were sung across northern india in one account it is said that the fame and spirituality of meera bai reached the ears of the mughal emperor oh, akbar oh, oh, no. akbar was tremendously powerful but he was also very that, interested in the various religious parts The problem was that Rajputs and Mughals were the worst of enemies. To visit Meera Bai would cause problems for both Akbar and Meera Bai. But Akbar was determined to see the princess saint Meera Bai. Disguised in the clothes of a beggar, he travelled with Tansin to visit Meera Bai. Akbar was so captivated by her soulful music and devotional singing that he placed at her feet a priceless necklace before leaving. In the course of time, Akbar's visit came to the ears of her husband, Pochaj. He was furious that a Muslim and his own enemy had set eyes oh. upon his wife. He ordered Meera Bai to commit suicide by drowning in a river. Meera Bai intended to honor her husband's command, but as she entered the river, Sri Krishna appeared to her and commanded to her to leave to Vrindavan where she could worship him in peace. Oh, so with a few followers Meera Bai left for Vrindavan like where she spent her time in like devotion you. to Krishna After a while her husband became regretful feeling that his wife was indeed a real saint Oh well, yeah So he traveled to Vrindavan and requested her to return Meera Bai forcefully agreed much to the displeasure of the rest of the family Soon after Meera Bai's husband oh, died, died fighting against the Mughals This made the situation even worse for Meera Bai. Her father-in-law, Rana Sanga, saw her husband's death as a way to get rid of Meera. He commanded her to commit sati, a process where the wife commits suicide by throwing oh, herself on the husband's what? funeral fire. However, Meera Bai, with the direct inner assurance of her beloved Sri Krishna, Krishna said that. that she would not do sati. Her Thank real God. husband Sri Krishna had not died. Oh, After this experience, her, her family continued to torture her. They restricted her oh, movements yeah. and sought to make her life as miserable as oh. possible. It is said that twice her family tried to kill her, once through a She's venomous beautiful. snake and once through a poisonous drink. On both occasions, it is said that Meera Bai, protected by the grace of Sri Krishna, mm-hmm. faced no harm. Eventually, upon the advice of learned men and saints, Meera slipped out of the palace and escaped to the holy city of Vrindavan, where she was free to worship Krishna to oh, her God. heart's content. Even learned sadhus would come to her for inspiration. There is a story of one such respected spiritual master who refused to speak to Meera Bai because she was What? a woman. Meera Bai replied that there was only one real man in Vrindavan. which was shri krishna everyone else was oh, a gopi of krishna hearing <laughs> this the spiritual master accepted the wisdom of meera bai uh-huh. and agreed to like, talk oh, to her right. later meera bai would become his oh, student wow. it is said that in her death she miraculously disappeared by merging into an idol of krishna one day she was singing in a temple when shri krishna appeared in his wow. subtle form shri krishna was so pleased with his dearest devotee that he opened Aww, his heart and Meera Bai course. merged with Krishna while in the highest state of Krishna Aww. consciousness I don't want it to end <laughs> I don't want it to end I want to hear more I mean that's that's some devotion right there and it, and I can see like we already married to Krishna like that theme keeps coming up and I mean that goes that uh, 
I always try to then, because I was brought up in, in the Catholic religion and, and that's what we learn from the Bible of our stuff. So a lot of times, like when I'm watching this, I kind of relate things back to just what my teachings, you know, and how similar they can be in that way. Because a lot of way, you know, like in the Catholic, at least they have priests and nuns and they can't get married. You know, they don't get married there because they already say they're married to God. So I can see like that relationship, like she was already married to her God, her Krishna, her Lord. I like that. Oh, and just, you know, how she just devoted since a little girl, since a little girl, she just like Lord Krishna, she was a, a devotee right away. Well, let me know what you think. I liked it. I liked that story a lot. And, and oh, I don't even want to get it. Because then I'm going to get mad if I start talking about how mean they were to her. Her, her own Like, the husband wasn't as bad. But he still, like, told her to go drown and <laughs> drown herself, you know. But not as mean as those other ones. All right, y'all. Let me know what you think. Comments, thumbs, all that. Until next time. Mwah!